Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Nathan Drinker. I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As you well know, we're on Anchor, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a plethora of other podcasting platforms. We're also on the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. Check us out on all those locations. And a happy belated 4th of July. As someone said recently that America is the greatest country. It's so great, in fact, that even the people that don't like it, they won't leave. Uh, and on that note, we welcome you into another fantastic show. Drink, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, you know, a pleasure as well uh, being here with you. And and to what you said, hey, I like the country, so I ain't leaving no time soon. But with that said, um, you know what time it is. It's another Wednesday. So, you know, we got to give the people what they want and what they came here for. Another day, another dollar. So, as always, we see what they don't. And you know we're going to say what they want. And last but not least... Let's talk some sports, baby. Let's roll, baby. All right, this is episode 62. We're going to talk NFL quarterback competitions, Shakari Richardson, and ESPN's internal turmoil surrounding Rachel Nichols and Maria Taylor. We're going to begin with the NBA Finals in Game 1 that kicked off that series last night with the Phoenix Suns taking a 1-0 series lead with a 118-105 victory. Uh, Chris Paul led the way with 32 points in his first ever NBA Finals game. He also got 27 from Devin Booker. DeAndre Ayton, big double-double, 22 points, 19 rebounds. The Suns led by 13 at the uh, – was it 13? No, it wasn't. It wasn't that many. But they led by 13 at the end of the game. They led by as many as 20 in the third quarter. The Bucks chipped it down to as little as seven in the fourth, but overall wasn't enough. Giannis did make, uh, did make his return to the court coming off that hyperextended knee. It looked fairly good, 20 points. On 6 of 11, he also had 17 rebounds, 29 points from Chris Middleton in the losing effort. Drink, uh, what was your uh, what was your big takeaways from game one? Well, here's the deal. We know what the Bucs are going to do. We, let's not sit here like it's a surprise. The Bucs in game one, they done lost every game one they done played thus far. Kind of remind me of a team last year, you know, go by the name <clears throat> Los Angeles Lakers. And that's neither here nor there. Um, they, they lost another game one. whoop de do. Um, we're very surprised. But I will say this for this game one loss. Um, Giannis ended up playing, so I think this is going to be a, 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 fa- a determinant factor as the series go on. Um, this series will go as the big three of each team goes. That's, that's how I see it. Last night, if you actually look at the numbers, from a team standpoint, well, the Bucks out-rebounded the Suns, okay? They had more assists than the Suns, okay? They even shot they even shot the three better than the Suns. Um, Suns had a better, you know, a slightly better field goal percentage. But the one, one area where they did win, um, I thought, was the turnover battle. So you say to yourself, as a team, the Bucks seem to outplay the Suns. Um, but when you start breaking down the big three, for the Suns, that's CP3, uh, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Aiden. And for the Bucks, that's Giannis, um, Middleton, and Holiday. Um, it's, it's clear to see that, listen, at the end of the day, when the Bucks' big three score, give you 59, right? But then the Suns get 59 from just CP3 and Booker, and they ain't even get to Aiden yet, it's probably going to be an L. It's probably going to be a Suns dub and an L for the Bucks. Um, with that said, you know, that that's like the biggest takeaway I take away from this whole series. When I looked at the game last night, I wanted to see, just like we talked about last week, if Giannis wasn't playing, what, what would Middleton and Holiday do? Giannis is playing. Now, remember I did say this last week that for some reason it seems like the Bucks play a different style of game without Giannis and that, 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 that part of the game that we – don't like about the Bucks came back last night with Giannis at the top of the key with the dribble, dribble, dribble. The only difference is I think Giannis kind of had an element of surprise on his side because he did look pretty outstanding for a guy that was supposed to be out for the rest of the you know season, rest of the playoffs. I mean, the guy, he got diagnosed with his injury, what, a week ago? And he, he had more spring in them knees than I gave him credit for. So I will give him credit for that. And for what it's worth, I think – that Giannis, as the game went along, he played better. So that showed me that he was kind of getting back in the rhythm. I think game two, he's going to be something to deal with. But the problem is, like I just said about the big three is, 
Giannis, he's probably most, most likely going to have an outstanding game in game two. But I, I, we don't know what we're going to get out of Holiday and Middleton. And I just think, listen, the Suns' big three is more consistent to this point. They really are. I, you know, I'm not going to say, like, Booker won't give you a clunker, CP3 won't give you a clunker, or Aiden, you know, won't show up. But thus far in these playoffs, those three have been a way more consistent big three than, than what the Bucks got right now. And I, I think – in game two, um, they're going to rely a lot more heavier on Giannis than they did in game one. And I, I just, as, as a Bucks fan, you got to ask yourself, hey, Drew Holiday, we gave up a lot for you, man. Where you at? Where you at, man? Like, where you at? You know, and, and for Middleton, I mean, I can't really beat him up. He had 29, but, I, you know, it, I don't know what, what's going on with the Bucks where, where one guy goes off, the other guy doesn't go off. They got to fix that. But at the end of the day, to keep it short and sweet, it's all about the big three. So, um, you know what I'm saying? If you want to make it to the top and pop, y'all, you might want to get something done there, Bucks. But, at the, you know, it, it's, it's just about the big three. I think Giannis is going to come back. I, I didn't think he had a bad game, to be honest with you. I thought his game was pretty good for, for coming off his injury. But as you can see, this team is going to need more from Giannis. They're going to need more. Like, I don't want to hear no more of that, what they was in the regular season. I'm done with the regular season stats. What are you doing in the playoffs? And, and that big three got to step it up. So, for me, good win for the Suns. But I do think the Suns did what the Suns was, was supposed to do. Listen, you're playing game one at home. You seem to be the more healthier team. You seem to be the better team. You should have won this game. I think game two will open our eyes a little more of, is the Suns really just that much better than the Bucks? Oh, would the Bucks make the necessary adjustments to even up that series? What are those ne necessary adjustments? That's what, you know, that is what I'm trying to see out of game two. But overall, I think the Suns just took care of business, and that's what we got. Yeah, a whole, whole lot to get in, into in this game. Just to, to build off what you said, because I think there's something there about this whole big three thing. I would go, probably go immediately to the seemingly third wheel for each team because I think that's probably where the, the you can say it, that was maybe another difference last night in this game DeAndre Ayton had a had a real impact on the game uh 22 points 19 rebounds I mean that's huge um especially for a team that outside of him is kind of limited um in the in the front court you know they don't the the, the Bucks sort of the Bucks have the the better depth on the inside uh, but Aiton held down the fort. He played a, played a really good game. Meanwhile, Drew Holiday, I mean, like you say, it, it just wasn't good enough. And we when we see this from time to time. Holiday, I mean, it comes and goes for him. The game one thing is is not something that's unusual. This is now the third straight series that they've lost game one. Um, and especially considering Phoenix has home court, uh, Giannis came back last night. And I thought he I thought he looked pretty good early on. Um, look, look to have a lot of spring in his step. I would say maybe later on in the game, maybe a little bit of fatigue set in. Uh, but I, I do agree. I think he's going to uh, come out more aggressive in game two. But the big the big thing is um, they, they can't lose Drew Holiday in all of this. Drew Holiday has to be an integral part of this team. And he's got to assume more ball handling responsibilities to kind of keep him involved. And I think if they do that, that's only going to help him on the defensive end stay engaged which is where the Bucks have got to make some adjustments, just as they had to make adjustments in the uh, Eastern Conference semis and Eastern Conference finals against uh, Brooklyn and Atlanta, respectively. Because the pick and roll that Phoenix was working last night, I mean, it was just an absolute clinic. Uh, it seemed like too far off in Milwaukee got caught in bad switches, and it, lo it looked like they switched too willingly, where you know their backcourt guys had opportunities to you know fight over the screens and stay attached to, to Phoenix's backcourt, whether it be CP3 or Devin Booker. And far too often you're looking at Brooke Lopez guarding uh, Chris Paul or Booker and you're like, well what this is a bad matchup. And Lopez, I thought to his credit, held his own. He did what he could, but um that's just an advantage for for Chris Paul or Devin Booker. And uh you know they they've every it's seemingly every time whenever they felt like it. You know, they just dribble off, they, they they wiggle around a little bit, and then, you know, it's a mid-range jump shot. Both of those guys are excellent in the mid-range. I think both guys are, are more deadly in the mid-range than they are from behind the arc. And we know how and we know how lethal they can be from out there. I think from Milwaukee moving forward, 
And I've said this from I've said this from time to time. I think Brooke Lopez, they're going to have to cut his minutes. You know, if, if you're going to employ, you know, the, the switching that they employed, you're going to have to downsize. I think you put Giannis at the five and let him bang with Aiton. I think Giannis has to make it a point to take him out of the game or limit him and battle him on the boards because Brooke Lopez coming out here. Look at this. Aiden got 17 defensive rebounds last night. Why does Brooke Lopez have one defensive rebound? I'd, li- I'd really like to know what Brooke Lopez is doing out there on the defensive end. Well, what do you mean? You just told me what he was doing. He's out there just getting abused in the pick and roll on the switch. Well, maybe they had something to do with it, but still, one defensive rebound. That's just unacceptable. But I'd like to see I'd like to see Bobby Portis out there a bit more. I've said that, you know, repeatedly. We finally got a little bit more of him when uh Giannis left with the hyperextended knee against Atlanta. But I think I think you see how it goes in game two. I don't think you change your start lineup. You see how Brooke Lopez is doing. You I think you make it a, a, a more point of emphasis to try to, you know, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton fight over those screens and stay attached so you don't your defense doesn't get compromised immediately. Because not only not only that do you get a mismatch with Lopez. But, who, but when Lopez comes off of Aiton, now you have the, the setup for the lob. And then, you know, if you take away the lob, now you're in rotation and then you get wide open threes. You know, so that's what you have going on. The other point about Phoenix is what I've seen enough Phoenix ball, uh, basketball now from this season to, to learn this about it. Phoenix is not going to beat themselves. And what I mean by that is they're going to take care of the basketball. They're not going to make mistakes. They play good defense. And you saw it, you saw it last night from the free throw line. These guys were 25 for 26. They took advantage of, of the of the whistles when they got them. They got quite a few of them. But they, you know, those little things that you have absolute control over, taking care of the ball, maximizing possessions, and hitting your free throws, that is what they did better than Milwaukee. Milwaukee was not good from the free throw line. We know they're hampered because Giannis just can't get it together from there for whatever reason. And Milwaukee had more turnovers. They didn't value the ball as much. So first and foremost, Milwaukee, they gotta they gotta be as solid as Phoenix is, and they can't they cannot shoot themselves in the foot because Phoenix Phoenix is not gonna shoot themselves in the foot and make careless mistakes over and over. So I mean th- those are some of the observations I have. But in the in the big picture, the biggest thing is I think Game Two Giannis will be better, uh, but they have to Drew Holiday has to be more involved. I think him and Middleton should get the bulk of the ball handling responsibilities play Giannis more off ball let him be let him be the guy to set the screen because we know how devastating he can be uh as a role man that's when you I mean he's going to play above the rim and I really think you know depending on how game two starts if Brooke Lopez is having is having trouble then I think you got to downsize and I, I didn't I didn't really like what Budenholzer did in the fourth quarter last night I don't know what I mean I like Brent Forbes I really do but if Brent Forbes ain't making threes, there ain't a whole lot of reason to be him in the game. He was in the game in the fourth quarter last night when they went small, and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I don't, I don't think. I mean, Brent Forbes, he can have his minutes, but I didn't think he. I don't think he's the right guy to be in there because I don't think he offers you much on the defensive end. I would stick with if I'm if I'm looking at the bench, I want Connaughton or Portis having the most minutes off the bench because those are the guys that do the little things, and they're better on the defensive end. Uh, than Brent Forbes. But overall, uh, Phoenix, like you say, they did what they were supposed to do, but I fully expect uh, Milwaukee to get back in this series. And I do think, you know, as long assuming Giannis is going to build off this and uh, that knee holds up, I think I think Milwaukee will uh, end up coming back from an early series deficit, deficit as they did in the last two series.